G'day fellas and welcome to my TED talk. In this video, we're going to be talking about why I think the Ottomans will become the brand new Mongols. So this is a game that I've recently played on the ladder. I've been playing a fair bit on the pup and this is one of those games. I'm up against a guy by the name of How888. I don't know how good this guy is. He didn't seem too bad playing up against him, but look, we're not really watching this game for the game. Rather, we're looking to study it and understand exactly why it might be that the Ottomans are the new Mongols. So we're just going to start it off slowly and explain through it. Uh, so the way this video is going to work is we're just going to be taking a look at this game and then we're actually going to get through to the build order. If you want to have a look at the build order, bam, there you go. That's what it looks like. Take a screenshot. We'll come back to it later in the video and we'll run you through exactly how to do it. Uh, but for the most part, let's just begin uh, by talking about the opening. So we're starting with the military school uh, in the beginning of the game. Now, the whole idea behind the Mongols uh, and their early aggression is that they force the enemy to react to what they're doing. And so responses typically to uh, that early aggression were responses that were sort of best done uh, where they could utilize their response in their subsequent gameplay. As an example, the French, you'd see them go for lots of scouts and then transition into professional scouts. Um, and, you know, you had different ways that you could manage it. So what we're doing here is we're looking to do pretty much the same thing. Essentially, we're looking to lock down a portion of the enemy base. Ideally, the stone mine to prevent a second town center or the gold mine, not to prevent age up. They're always going to get their age up through, uh, but to just be aggressive, annoying, prevent them from gathering gold, prevent them from gathering stone, depending on the matchup that you're actually playing. Now, in this matchup, obviously, it's against the Malians. I've got a wonderful spawn here. His gold is right at the front of his base. He's also quite far away from the town center, so it means it's a little bit more difficult for him to defend this, uh, and we'll slow it down as the spearmen begin making their way in. Now, one of the keys here that is different to what a lot of other people have been doing is that we actually add in a barracks in the Dark Age as well. And the whole idea behind this is because if you've only got a single spearman, it's very easy for your enemy to pull, you know, one, two, even three villagers and actually just go fight the spearman, especially if you're out on a stone mine or if you've, they've got villagers on the gold mine. So the whole idea behind this is that with that extra barracks, you're just going to speed up that production. So we're only making two spearmen in the early game, but that's going to mean that by three minutes 30, we should have a third spearman out here already. Uh, sieging down the enemy buildings or, or harassing villages. Now, we're not going to make any more spearmen in the Dark Age. That's it. We're just committing to a military school and to a barracks. And you might be thinking, okay, that's a pretty big investment, Drongo. I don't know if that's really worth it. You know, you might as well just go up to the, the next stage yourself. Well, hold on a minute. Look at this. Now we've got a response coming out from our enemy. They've decided the best response here is not just a barracks, but a barracks with every single villager that was on food, 10 villagers. Uh, he's rushing this one up. Now, there's a couple of other responses that you can go for. You can go for an outpost, but keep in mind, if you go for an outpost, then you can just siege uh, this location. So, you know, typically the best response would be like some kind of outpost that would be here that's defense, defended by the town center and also defends the stone outcropping. But you can still be very annoying with that. And not only are you annoying with that, but you also force 100 wood as a response because you're not actually going to be losing these spearmen. The idea is you want to keep them alive. They will form part of your army eventually in the game. And now you can see the first Donzos coming out. Uh, we're just going to make sure that we're constantly sieging. And then when he does come in, we're going to turn. We're going to fight him. Uh, but uh, try not to... Uh take his baits uh but then behind this we're now aging up four minutes 30 we're dropping down the landmark and i'm a big fan of the twin minaret madrasa i think this is much better than the trading landmark i know a lot of people are sort of mixed about it my opinion is that look if you, it, it basically guarantees that you can open with one scout and you're always going to have food even if you find like two or three sheep you're fine you don't even need to like worry or fuss about it you can see we've got a little bit of micro coming on here but Look, this isn't the, the this isn't the attraction right here. The attraction is that the enemy is over here gathering up their resources, still yet to age up. By the way, we're already a quarter of the way through. He's he's sitting on three hundred food. He's made donzos. He's he doesn't know how many donzos he should make. He doesn't know whether we're really committing to hard feudal. He sees more spearmen coming out. It's double spears. We kill the scout. We're now going to kill the rest of the donzos. And now he's starting to panic because he's like, okay, well I'm going to lose all of this. I'm going to lose all my gold mine, absolutely everything. And you can see he pulls all the villagers. Now th this. This is 100% an overreaction, okay? But typically, enemies don't always know how to react to these things. And that's exactly what the Mongols did so well. And that's part of the reason why I think the Ottomans are the new Mongols. Because now we've got a Sultan Hani trade network. He's putting down a landmark that he never wanted to make. You want to know how I know he never wanted to make it? Because he never bloody used it. He never made a market. He never made traders. He was never interested. All he wanted to do was utilize the arrow slits that come off this to defend here. But he, he didn't even know. We were falling back from this because we were aging up behind this. Landmark almost complete. You can see it's about six minutes. So it's quite a late age up here. Probably not my best game, not my sharpest. You can typically get your age ups about 5.30, 5.20. I've even gotten it down to. And now this is going to be a key factor. As soon as we age up. Now, don't 
I, I will just say, don't mind the macro. It's it's it's, it's not the best macro game. I'll sh I'll show you a game where we get picture perf pixel perfect macro. So as soon as we age up, what are we doing? We're taking advantage of the cheaper uh, the cheaper blacksmith. We're taking advan advantage of the cheaper archery range here, uh, and we're immediately putting those bad boys down. And we're also putting down a military school, and we're making sure that we are starting to train Spahi. And the idea here is that if your enemy... Now, he didn't do it, but typically your enemy's going to be countering. You know, they, they see Spearman and they're like, okay, what, what does Spearman counter? Or rather, what counters Spearman? And they're like, archers. So what do you make? Well, you make Spahi because that's what they're going to be thinking. You get the blacksmith up as quickly as you can as well. You can see we immediately get these bad boys up as soon as possible. Now, when it comes to Vizier points, uh, Anatolian Hills, another great way to supplement that food income. We didn't get a whole lot of sheep, but we're not too fast about it. It's not a big deal here. And look what we're working to behind this. We're working towards a second town center behind this. Meanwhile, the enemy, he's kind of, he's razzled. He's dazzled. He doesn't know exactly what's happening. Now, oh, the game goes on and it doesn't really matter what happens from here because it, it's rather the opening that I want to show, that I want to demonstrate. And this is something that I've been using throughout the ladder. Obviously, I'm not playing against the best people at the moment. You know, I'm, I, I think at the moment I'm only plat on the ladder. And there's, to be honest, there's, there's not a lot of people playing. So you don't get to play up against the best people. Um, but... Uh, uh, realistically, I, I, I think this has got a lot of potential. Uh, but we'll, we'll jump in and I'll show you what one of the build orders looks like or what this this specific build order looks like. So we'll jump into uh, to a game. I think it's the fifth one here, which wasn't terrible. Yeah, this one's at 821. So I'll show you what, what the opening looks like. And it's it's very, very specific, all of it. And it, it kind of, it's, it's a bit weird because it's so specific. It's oddly specific. So starting off, you're going to take five bills, take them down to your stone. One villager just going to start out on food. Now, this changed. I was working on a build order before the patch. When the patch came in and they reduced the cost of the barracks, when they reduced the cost of the blacksmith, all of a sudden, this this build became very viable. That's a double V right there. Very viable. Uh, because now, all of a sudden, you know, the developers are really promoting you. You can go for a second town center. In fact, you actually get it a bit faster because you start with a bit of extra wood. You can get a 430 town center, or technically 435 town center, with the Ottomans. Uh, but I still prefer this build order. I think it's got a lot more strength. So you're going to rally your villagers to two straggler trees and then to the wood line, and then you'll, you'll make a lumber camp on the wood line. And the idea is that you're going to utilize those straggler trees, and we're going to pull our villagers off at very specific timings, making sure that we build our house two tiles away from the town center so that we've got um, a space for our farms. Now, the key here with the military school is we always position it like this next to the town center. We want to make sure that uh, it, it is close to the town center. You don't want it out too far away towards the enemy because if your enemy does look to counterattack, you need to be able to defend it. It's a, it's a very expensive building. Uh, so the military school comes down, uh, and now we've got four villagers here on on wood. So it was one of the villagers that dropped off stone uh, that now went and made that military school. And what we're going to do with these villagers here, so we're rallying to, to food, by the way, uh, is we're waiting until we get up to uh, this next drop, which will be 120, and then we're going to pull one villager up off the wood. And check this out. This, this is where it comes to just that, that, that classic Drongo magic right here. We're going to pull one villager, and it's going to build the barracks. And now you can see this cypress tree's got 30 wood left on it. Three vills getting it. Mwah. Just chef's kiss right there. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Barracks coming down. And you can see the way that we're putting this as well. There's actually a method to this madness. You want to line these bad boys up, because when, when your uh, blacksmith comes down, it's going to come right down next to the military school. Absolutely square. And then you can actually fit one, two, three, four barracks all along the edge here. Uh, and then by the same token, you know, you got your military school up there. You can throw a few more down there. So these guys continue doing what they do best. Gathering up the wood. Barracks coming out. We're going to just queue up two spearmen straight away and begin rallying them across the map. Now, one of the, the key things for you is looking to, to scout around your base, gather up those sheep, and then return them back to the base. You can see we've got just a, a, a few little sheep here. And then the scout is going to run and going to clear the path of wolves because you don't want any wolves annoying your spearmen as they make their way across the map. And it's going to be looking for enemy stone, enemy gold, depending on the matchup. If you're up against the French, uh, then, you know, maybe you want to apply pressure to the stone mine because you don't really care if they've got gold. If they've got gold, well, what's, what's the big deal? All they're going to do is make knights and you've already got spearmen. So you're not too fast. It's all about stopping or delaying that second town center and forcing them into making archers. If you're up against the Chinese, then it might be a bit more about focusing on that stone as well. If, if you're up against, you know, I think maybe the, the Rus and the English are the only civs that might have a, a bit of a response to this just because, you know, the villages for the Rus uh, are always going to be protected underneath the town center and the English villagers have the ability to fire back. So that is it. But now we see, so we're, we're up to the next stage, uh, which is where we start adding in gold to the build order. So we're starting to rally them in. We're up to three minutes at the moment. Uh, so that one's going to be coming in. We, we go up to three villages on gold. We've got nine on food and we're going to be dropping down our lumber camp shortly. 
made sure we add it in our house. And you can see we're already starting to just harass, just be annoying here. Just rallying down towards his position. And remember, you never really want to get locked into a fight with the enemy. If they if they pick a fight with you, if they bring out seven or eight villagers, don't take that fight. Just fall back and then make sure you shift queue them in. So always what you're doing is you're shift queuing out to here and then shift queuing back in. Uh, and I think that's really important. But now we see the, the fourth spearman making its way across the map. And slowly and steadily, we're working towards that second age. And now rallying out to wood here, dropping down that lumber camp. So after, so 933 is what we want. And then we're rallying out to wood. Once again, I'll, I'll leave a, uh, I'll leave a, an image in the description for this one. If you want to follow along. Uh, now, obviously this is on the condition that the, the, the Ottoman stays the same uh, in the, in the next patch, in the subsequent patch, because things might change. And as a result, this build order will be different, but you can see how tight it is. We're 20 food up on this bad boy and we've got a villager in queue five villagers now going to be moving over to the twin minaret madras and these villagers going to be coming over to stone so we're not interested in gathering up any more gold and we've just got three villagers here on stone so the idea is that we just want enough stone so that we're able to drop down our second military school and then it's a slow trickle of stone coming in making sure we're able to secure that second TC. I'm also a big fan of just leaving them on stone and actually going for a third TC because typically your enemy's going to try and get a second TC up. So if, not only if you can delay their second TC, but if you can also go for a third TC and be quite safe, then you're going to be fine. So you can see I, I make a little bit of a mistake here. I, I, I kind of go for the villagers and I, I subsequently get one of my spearmen caught. You, you always want to avoid losing your spears. One of the options that you will have with the Vizier Council or with the uh, Imperial Council is going for field work. I'm not a big fan of this. I think this is probably a better, better uh, selection for fast castling I'm, I'm always a big fan of anatolian hills i think it's by far the best but you can see we've got the shift click going always just double checking and making sure that we're just traveling backwards and forwards and if we do get into a fight like this we're just going to shift click away shift click away and there it goes so just shift clicking we, we see a low health villager we're like ah you know what kind of give me that villager and now we're just going to shift click away and make sure that we always try and follow these back spearmen coming in but you can see the age up time here not too bad we're sitting at about 520 at the moment should be about a 530 age up still rallying out here and we're just about to cross that threshold of 100 stone, which is what we need. And then it's going to be blacksmith. It's going to be a stable and it's going to be a second military school. We're also going to make sure that we switch over our military schools as soon as we age up. Make sure that we get that Spahi training instead of the Spearman. Because typically, you know, let's say we're, we're up against the Ottomans here. But if you're up against that French player, we're at 5 minutes 40. They might have made an archery range now. They may have responded with archers. And so now you're going to be falling back towards your own base. Once you've, you know, once you've done your damage, once you've seen the archer, once you've confirmed that archer, that's when you're going to be falling back towards your base. And now we can see the production coming through. Stable military school blacksmith and we're rallying out a couple of villages here just to the stone outcropping because we're looking for that second town center and now behind this we're going to make sure that we also are taking advantage of the extra berries uh, that spawn around the twin minaret madras not only are these berries faster to gather so they're 50 percent faster to gather um, but they also respawn after 120 seconds so the sooner we take these the better all of our villagers are on this we're leaving our we're leaving the the, the sheep alone we do not want to touch them we always want to exhaust these first and that's part of the reason why that landmark is is so good because it guarantees you that you've got that food source and it means that you're going to be able to carry that through so you can see that behind this we're still able to keep up pretty decent production we get our first sparky out now at 640 uh, and we've fallen back towards our side of the map. If the enemy starts thinking about pushing out with even, you know, two or three archers, the Spahi is going to be able to shut that down completely. They're not going to be able to force you off stone. You're going to be able to secure that second town center without too much of a hassle. And then behind this, it's up to you what you want to go into. You can look at going to, to a fast castle, potentially. You can look at adding in that third TC, but you can see we're moving out over to add in our second TC over onto this. Um, now, one of the other things to note is that you will typically want one or two villages on stone. Uh, because your next uh, Imperial Council tech is going to be the military campus. So you want to make sure that you're able to afford that as soon as you've got the ability to do it. But there's your TC coming down at about, I think it was about 710. It was dropped down actually probably closer to 705. So it's about a seven minute town center there. Uh, and, th and this should be absolutely safe. There's no way a French player is going to be able to deny this from you. Obviously, I've got, I'm a little bit out of position here, uh, but more than enough Sparky to try and deal with archers, more than enough Spearmen to deal with any knights. Uh, and we, we can see that there are more Sparky rallying in from this point. So it, th this build just leaves you in such a, a, a wonderful position. You're able to rally here to the, the food sources. Remember, the, these villages, it says eight villages on food. Technically, this is 12 villages on food. We've got more villages here on food because it's that extra 50% faster. And, and there's no other buffs at this stage. So that's a real 50% that's not stacking onto anything. But that's going to be it for this. I'm a big fan of this build order. Uh, 
I think that realistically, uh, this is one of the 100% the strength of this civilization when you compare it to a civil... Or, I guess you can you can try and play it a little bit more passive like you would the Chinese. And I think it definitely works that way as long as you're playing for that sort of post-imperial game. But I think that this is 100% the way the devs actually intend you to play the Ottomans. And I'm looking forward to seeing how people go. So now I've put this build order out into the wild. I'm looking forward to seeing a few more people use it. Who knows? Maybe Salami gets a hold of it. Maybe Beastie gets a hold of it. We actually get to see it in action at the top level because I reckon it's got some potential. You got fast age up times, fast second town centers, and you get to be very annoying to your enemy. And that's always a good thing in my book. So there you go, fellas. That is absolutely it. And uh, hey, we'll uh, we'll make sure that we, we cast some games for you guys soon so you, you guys can post Custard. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next one.